Harry and Meghan struggle to find a way to escape after being found to have colluded with Beijing and Moscow to destroy the Commonwealth. Hello friends! Welcome to breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple Harry and Meghan Markle on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News Version 2 channel. Beijing and Moscow eagerly supporting Team Harry and Meghan, are doing so for malevolent and self-serving motives. Whether on purpose or not, the two outcast British royals are dangerously endangering the national security of the United Kingdom, and, by extension, that of the United States and its allies, as they lavishly decamped to Southern California. Nothing about British national security, not even the 56-member Commonwealth of Nations, the late Queen Elizabeth II's greatest legacy appears to be holy to the two in their selling out of king and country in return for Hollywood-style notoriety on Netflix. The Hypocrite's Netflix series, Harry and Meghan, featured commentary from British journalist Afua Hirsch, who mockingly referred to the Commonwealth as Empire 2.0 and painted it as an ugly archetypal incarnation of bigotry and authoritarianism. It is implied that the British royal family is its main promoter. What a mess. I wish the Commonwealth Charter would concur. There isn't. The governing charter explicitly declares that it is a voluntary organization of independent and sovereign nations and establishes all member states as being on an equal footing. Further recognition of its unique strength is made in its founding principles, which state that it derives from the mix of our variety and our shared legacy in language, culture, and the rule of law. The story of Harry and Meghan is similar to Alfred Hitchcock's timeless mystery comedy, The Trouble with Harry, in many ways. The actor Philip Truex's character, Harry Warp, is discovered dead in the film by the British director. Edmund Gwen, Chris Kingle in The Miracle on 34th Street, Shirley MacLaine, and Mildred Natwick all played characters who believed they had accidentally killed poor Harry. The current dystopian twist, though, is that Prince Harry wants the people in the UK and the US to think that the royal family, the palace as a whole, or the firm as it is called, and the British media have all plotted to ruin him and his family. He and Meghan Markle both give only hazy explanations for why and how. All of them center on claims that she is racist, but none of them name particular royal family members by name. In the hypocrite's adaptation of Alfred Hitchcock's dark comedy, each of the three main suspects they falsely claim is to blame for their fall from grace and demise should concede they are racist in every way, whether or not this has been proven, and admit their guilt without the benefit of facts, evidence, a trial, or a jury. Harry and Meghan's tantrums would be funny if the real-world repercussions were not so serious and wide-ranging, particularly in a world where the West and its ideas and ideals of neoliberalism are being attacked by Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin, among others, in Ukraine. The Commonwealth is currently facing an existential threat from Moscow and Beijing, with East, Central, and Southern Africa being the most vulnerable. Both dictatorships present radically different worldviews from those of the West. China adheres to a totalitarian democracy in which the Chinese Communist Party rules over the populace while the citizens serve as the nation's masters. Putin advocates for an authoritarian, multipolar world created by armed invasions and fake elections. 
One strategy of the attack, particularly by China, has been to acquire the Commonwealth. You would call it a high-stakes hostile takeover. Chinese investments of 685 billion pounds have been made in Commonwealth countries by sea since 2005, but Beijing's generosity has a high price. When it comes to crucial votes on UN resolutions, Xi has forced a number of Commonwealth nations to back Beijing over London. At a vote on China's Hong Kong national security law in the Human Rights Committee in 2020, 10 Commonwealth members voted with Beijing rather than London. Putin has also benefited from his plan to use the Wagner Group as a mercenary army for rent throughout Africa. Early in March, just a majority of African nations, 51%, voted to denounce Putin's special military operation in Ukraine. Five Commonwealth nations, Mozambique, Namibia, Rwanda, South Africa, and Tanzania, abstained from voting. By October, neither Harry nor Meghan had any justification for continuing to be in denial about the extent of Beijing's and Moscow's growing influence on the Commonwealth's member countries. If they had been unable to recognize this growing threat to the Commonwealth at the beginning of the war in Ukraine. Alarmingly, 10 Commonwealth nations voted against annexing Donetsk, Kherson, Luhansk, and Zaporizhia in October. Most egregious, though, is Prince Harry's apparent inability to comprehend the largely symbolic yet very real role his father, King Charles III, plays as the commander of the British Armed Forces given that the threat to the Commonwealth is not just political or economic, but also a military one that is constantly expanding. Along with conducting mercenary operations across Africa, China is resolutely militarily encircling a large portion of the Commonwealth in Africa and the Pacific. This is in addition to the Wagner Group of Russia. Beijing is achieving this encirclement with its Belt and Road Initiative, which includes expanding the Lamu Port South Sudan-Ethiopia Transport Corridor and creating a deep water port in Lamu, Kenya. According to reports, China is also constructing a military facility in Tanzania, increasing the size of its naval station in Djibouti, East Africa, and preparing further military outposts. The timing of Harry and Meghan's Empire 2.0 ratings, marketing gimmick for their Netflix documentary, could not be worse, given Moscow's and Beijing's ambitions for the Commonwealth and Africa in particular. Yes, Team Harry and Meghan will likely counter that they could have been better ambassadors to Africa, as some have previously done. That, however, is revisionist theory it seems like they were never much interested in the position. Additionally, Harry and Meghan are flagrantly endangering a worldwide economic partnership that represents up to 10% of the United Kingdom's entire foreign commerce by collecting personal fortune in America. Some estimates put it at more than $150 million for the Netflix series alone. King and Country were eventually swapped out for Bling and Sundry by Harry and Meghan. Who among us shall divide us? Was a moving hymn heard at Queen Elizabeth's burial, particularly in terms of fostering racial division in Africa, Moscow and Beijing are wagering that Harry and Meghan will provide part of the answer. It compromises not just the security of the United Kingdom, but also the effectiveness of its military and economic alliance with Washington. It is revealed in The Trouble with Harry, warning, spoilers, that Harry passed away naturally. As no member of the royal family, the palace, or the media is to blame for Harry and Meghan's self-inflicted injuries, 
neither was he killed. Ironically, Jerry Mathers, later of Leave It to Beaver fame, was one of the young supporting performers in Hitchcock's comedy. In that sense, leave it to Harry to have completely botched up the situation, not likely with Megan guiding him at every turn. Really, spare us and American national security from any more outbursts. What do you think about the consequences Harry and Meghan have had on the royal family and the Commonwealth? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye!